start off with what you've called a double layer of protection. Uh, you've said it's like breathing at Berkshire. Do you feel, though, this year, of all years, looking back, that Berkshire has ever strayed from that? Well, we made a few investment errors in the last year, more than usual, as a matter of fact. But apart from that, and it was pretty minor in the big scheme of things, no, we haven't strayed. We haven't strayed at all from our basic ideas. You talked about some mistakes that were made uh, over the last year, especially in 2008. Uh, but of the Berkshire family, uh, what companies are you most concerned about at this point? Well, everything that's hit by a cyclical uh, depression is hit at Berkshire. Retailing is hit. Carpets are hit. Anything in building products is hit. And so we have a lot of things that got hit. But the two biggest businesses are insurance and utilities. And the utilities are, in effect, not hit. And insurance, I would argue, this recession is a net plus for insurance, particularly GEICO. GEICO's sales are just galloping skyward. So if you take the operating businesses of Berkshire, we're not some of them are suffering their share of this thing, but Berkshire as a whole is is not getting a normal share of a, of a recessionary decline. You know, but what I really mean there is beyond sort of the cyclical events, beyond the fact that the housing market has been rocked, and of course that's going to hurt Sean, that's going to hurt the builders, but what about fundamentally? Uh, look at Gen Re, some ongoing issues there. Are there other companies, or, or is Genry the one, correct me if I'm wrong, but th that there are some fundamental concerns about? Well, I would argue that Genry has been so enormously improved that you can scarcely recognize it over the, you know, from its bottom take to its present state. So, no, I, I, I would say by and large, practically everything in Berkshire that's insurance related is, is flourishing. The insurance industry and its exposure to risk on the financial product side um, has been highlighted. The world knows about it now if they didn't before with AIG. Um, how do you see the AIG situation playing out as it relates to Genry? Well, I think that what happened to AIG has no effect on Genry except a favorable effect. When a major competitor gets dented a little in reputation, and by the way, that's not something we welcome, uh, it, it helps the people who are less dented. But do you believe the government is uh, continuing to evaluate some possible legal action against Genry with an AIG transaction? I think that's winding up. Let's move on and talk about the banks in general. Uh, interesting thing that I read, you, you talked about how the banks will use their enormous political power to prevent changes to the industry, fundamental changes that you argue could benefit society as a whole. Why, why do the two have to be mutually exclusive? I mean, why won't it happen that we will see a shift to the better of, of, of the broader spectrum, not just for the Well, banks? I think we will get a shift to the better, but the situation was so god-awful that that's not enough to have a shift to the better. We need a revolutionary shift to the better. And I, I'm skeptical that that will occur given the lobbying power of the affected people and the amount of money they make in the old system. And the short-term memory that we all seem to have when things pass? Yes, and the tendency of the political class to chase the wrong rabbit. You know, if it's in the headlines, they tend to chase the wrong rabbit when the big one is like the corporate jets? Ignored or something. Yeah, our main problem is not the corporate jets, but having people who use the government's credit, either as a matter of direct guarantee or implicit guarantee, just do any damn crazy thing they want, no matter how stupid or how venal, and then get bailed out by the government when troubles come which cause massive troubles to the general public. People are furious at that. There are going to be changes, but these people don't, the people affected, don't really want the changes. 
Wall Street's idea of an acceptable change would be if they went from 30 to 1 leverage to 15 to 1.